Along with my uh, VTEC conversion of my MIDI, which you, you'll see in the background, this beautiful piece of automotive history this is my 1979 Leyland Moke. And one of the things I got to do before the season really kicks in is I'm going to add fuel injection to this car. So how are we going to do it? Why are we going to do it? I'm going to do a little series on it. Uh, just, just basically showing what I did, breaking down the costs, and seeing what kind of results I can get. Basically, uh, I'm running a single one and three quarter inch SU car on a 1098 in the Moke here, which you'll see plenty of. Uh, you know what, the system runs fine, but I'm not really a carburetor guy. In my opinion, a car should have fuel injection. I mean, that's just the way it is. So fuel injection, electronic ignition. I'm a big believer in those two uh, items for engine management. So. The car works fine. Like I say, the car's not slow, it's not fast. You know, it's not slow or fast. And I'm not really doing this for a power gain. Uh, just doing it, hoping to get a little bit better drivability. Uh, it, it doesn't have like a uh, coolant temperature gauge, and things like that. So I want to have that added as well. I also feel that I'll benefit from the O2 sensor and things like that. Have a better feel for what the engine's doing, be able to monitor those types of things. Rather than the carburetor, um, in my opinion, you know, there's a little bit of guesswork with carburetor, right? So a little bit less guesswork when the system is implemented properly. So anyway, so here's what we're going to do. And here, another reason I'm doing it this way, uh, I picked up a secondhand SPI intake and manifold. So we're going to run that. Part of the reason I want to do it this way is because I feel like this would be pretty easy as far as, you know, as far as, if I conversions go, and these ought to be readily available. People are bringing SPI minis over to the states, and they're pulling the fuel injection off, in part because they can't work with the Rover ECU, right? So these parts ought to be readily available. Um, I picked this one up for about 150 bucks. I don't know if that's a good deal or not, um, you know, based on what's out there now. Uh, all right, MS3 Extra is what we're going to use to manage the system that we put on. And innovate O2 sensor and gauge. All right. So basically, you know, that's the setup. Um, you'll see, oh, and I got a trigger wheel. We're going to run a wasted spark configuration because I'm not going to put a cam sensor uh, on the car. All right. So I'm at the step here where I'm mounting the trigger wheel, and that's going in fine. But it came with this little spacer to mount the bracket, which is right here, to hold the Hall Effect sensor. The bracket will go right there, but this valve chain, valve chain cover interferes with the bolt, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have to modify this. Alright, well, I was putting in the bracket for the Hall Effect sensor and quickly realized that this bolt's obviously way too short, so I had to go get another bolt. And then that bolt was a real pain to put in. I'll show you what I had to do with that. I ended up jacking the engine up and everything. Uh, took the trigger wheel back off, which, just to make sure everybody sees this thing, this thing is beautiful. Is that in focus? All right. I got this, again, triggerwheels.co.uk. I got no affiliation with them. I just ordered it and they shipped it to me. Uh, and it's it's really it's really a pretty piece. It is going to add uh, 1.1 pounds to the end of your crank. All right, getting this little guy in here was a real bugger. Well, you can see this bolt way down here locates the the uh, bottom of the bracket. This would be a lot easier to do, obviously with the engine out. But I'm not I'm not taking this out because this car needs a does need kind of a light restoration. I mean, it's got a little bit of rust and stuff, and we're going to do. And this is basically phase one of this project. So anyway. So I got that in now, and then the other piece is going to go in here, and then we're going to locate the the uh, sensor over here. And in order to get that in, I had to jack the engine up. You can see these these bolts down here are out, so I've got a little bit extra clearance. And then I pushed the crank pulley out and gave me a little bit more room. Other than that, man, it was it was not going in. All right, well there it is installed for the first time, and. Uh, I don't think it's lined up correctly. I think that the 
hole sensor is supposed to be out here so that the tooth wheel is more centered. So before I time it, I'm gonna wait for an opinion back from the guys on the MS3 forums. All right, it's time to locate the O2 sensor that I got here from uh, Innovate. And once I get it going, I'll bring you in closer, show you what I'm doing, but had kind of an accidental removal of the exhaust system here. I took this bolt off, took off this bolt right here, and then the whole thing just sort of dropped out. So that was kind of fun, hurt my hand a little bit, whatever. Now I've got great access to uh, drill my hole and get it in. Basically what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go on the side here, just past the collector, and what that's gonna allow me to do is route the cable up through the shift, the uh, gear shifter gator, and up the front. So it's gonna look kinda of janky, I think, having a wire running right up the front, but that's the cleanest way I can think to do it right now. All right, so I'm pleased with that. Uh, the welds went in a lot easier than I thought they would, being that <clears throat> we're dealing with two completely different thicknesses of metal. Uh, you know, it's not going to win any awards, but it's on there, and the O2 sensor will go right in there. So, all right, let's try to get this mounted back to the car. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to calibrate this MTXL uh, unit. And so I got my power supply here. We'll collect connect red to red. White and black to ground. And I just want to do this calibration so I don't have to do it later. So hopefully it'll stay calibrated. We, we might have to run through this later when I have it actually connected up. So, not connected to the sensor. Power it. Voltage is a little bit, uh, yeah, voltage is right. Okay. Display is E2. Power it down. Connected to the sensor. Pull that cap off. Power it on again. Look through the heater cycle. Still heater. Really kind of glad this works. I bought this thing like two years ago, two or three years ago, and haven't even touched it. Or I'm not pushing enough amperage. Mm. 
Okay, here we go. Calibrate and 22.4. All right, good to go. That's what it's supposed to do. So now we shut it off. All right, that's a lot of what I can do now. I'm gonna go ahead and install this and start working on some of my wiring. All right, well, this is gonna be a shaky part of the video here because we're underneath the car, but what I've done is I've put the bung for the O2 sensor in, but it's too close to the shifter. It's too far back on the pipe. And this is what happens. I freaking measured it, and then it kind of fell apart, and that's when I hurt my hand, when it jammed me up against this jack stand right here. Um, it just collapsed on me. But anyway, and I'm too far back. So what I need to do is take it apart, move it further forward so that we can actually locate it. Because you can see, I don't know if you can see, but if that goes in, I've got the plastic cover on. If that goes in, the back side, my finger, hits the shifter. So, I mean, it's obviously way too tight. So, yeah, there's not time, or if you don't, can't do it right the first time, you always have time to do it again. Luckily, it's Saturday. All right, well, slight change of plans here. Um, as you can see, this, this exhaust, it just sort of came apart when, when I unbolted the support that goes right here to the, I think to the subframe. Maybe the transmission, I don't know. And this, you know, these were just slipped inside the other pipes, or actually the other pipes were slipped inside of here. And then I mounted that bung too far back. So it's got to come forward. But then, take a look at this thing. It's looking pretty tired. And on top of that, I don't really like the way it just kind of exited out of the back, pointing down in the center. So, we've got this guy, which is an RC40 single box that I bought on about 11 years ago, because I've been accumulating these parts for a while. And I ordered a all new exhaust after finding my hanger kit, an exhaust hanger kit. So, you know, I'm just gonna wait for that to come in and then I'm gonna keep working on the electricals and I'll make another video about that. So a little bit of a break, rather than patching that and redoing it, we're just gonna, just gonna put a whole new exhaust. All right. Uh, sorry, wait for shipments and next video.